Welcome back to Sun Rise. Today we've got uh, Dr. Amos Akimba, who is an Adeko and Afeni mm -hmm. Ferry Chieftain. Thank you for coming this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Could you give us your impression about? Uh, we, we just had uh, the uh, Ariba representative leave the studio. He was talking about the statements they made. What's your impression about all of these threats and counter comments? I'm not surprised at all. Nigeria is threatening every but and groups. What yes. do you mean Nigeria? Are we not Nigerians? Yes. We're threatening ourselves. Yes. yes. When we lie to ourselves and we're reaping the fruits of lie of, of lying. It's, that's a threat to our livelihood. We say we're a federal republic. We're not federal. We're not a republic. We say the state of Nigeria is secular. We're not secular. We use taxpayers' money to send people to Saudi Arabia and Israel every, every year. A country that is built on fraudulence will reap fraud. And when the fraud is coming, we say people are shouting. Why wouldn't they shout? Hospitals are gone. Schools are gone. The roads are not there. Electricity does, it does not exist. Water is scarce. And you think people will not cry? So those are the little pointers that have resulted in this They're kind of major, statements. They are the major thing that is afflicting Nigeria. We were not like this originally. It was Europe by all the various ethnic groups. They were living in harmony, in harmony. Productivity was going on. We had industrial estates booming, springing up. We have four refineries. They're all there. And our population is increasing. The things to make life worthwhile, they are not there. People are going to bed without food. Children are emaciated. Research evidence are coming out that the cranial capacity of the brains of our children are getting smaller. And you say people will not shout? We are victims of the lie that we call our own, the social contract, which is another name for the Constitution. We say we in Nigeria give this concern to ourselves. We didn't. It was imposed. And it's not working. It's centralized. And the good things of life are not available for Nigerians. And they are crying. And you begin to blame them. You don't blame victims. You blame the system that produces the victims. So they, they are actually on the same side when they, uh, the Igbos say that uh, we want secession. And the House has said, OK, you can go freely. The Middle Belt say that we're not part of the North. You have a fanny fairy on the one side. They are all crying out for the same thing. Correct. Do they realize this, though? Well, if education is deficient, uh, knowledge is also deficient. I think they do. Only they are suffocating. And they say, hey, give me breathing space, please. Let me put my house in order. That's all we are hearing. That's what it amounts to. Nigerians are hurting. Religion and ethnicity and whatever else is used to mask the class divide. The elites have let us down. The definition of elite is a group of people that have the best of whatever is going in that society. So there are two, two tribes now in Nigeria, the elites and the masses. Exactly. And they're using religion and ethnicity to mask their inefficiencies. The elites who are supposed to provide leadership, they are not. All these professors, fellow of these institutes or that, they can't make roads. Even their own cars, they cannot repair their cars when they are bad. We cannot produce food, and we have professors of agronomy, of agriculture, of these. He doesn't even know how to grow them. We, we spend trillions of naira every year to import our food that could be produced here in this country. The elites have let us down, whether military elites, civilian elites, religious elites, of all persuasions. We're failures. What's the way out? The way out is to go back to the drawing board. This constitution is not made by Nigerians. It's imposed. A federal constitution should be truly a federal constitution. You don't centralize everything. The people at the center in Abuja, they're loafers. Things go there, whether in the National Assembly, the judiciary, and the uh, executives. They are, they are not serving. They cannot do it. They are not machines. They put too much on. There's too much centralization of responsibility, of rights. 
And so the thing is breaking down and people are shouting and you begin to blame the victims. We are all victimized. Will it be wrong to say, for instance, say, let's step back a little, be patient, look at what the new budget will bring, look at the new reforms the government has put in place, look at the so many um, uh, SIP programs that they have, the structural intervention programs that they have, and they have guaranteed that these things will work. Can we be a little more patient to see that we see the benefits before we conclude? Jimba, please, please. You say they have guarantee. Which guarantee do they have? We've been having budgets every year. They never work. We are in June now, almost to the middle of June. But the, budget, new, the budget has not been passed. It's a new administration. Yeah. Does it make a difference? New for what? New bandits. New uh, corruption. What is the difference between last year and this, except with that we're going backwards? No, they say that in the past 16 who years they, of the who PDP, are these they? this government said in the past 15, 16 years of the, of the previous administration, mm -hmm. it has brought this country to ruins and they are trying to fix it. That's do what they believe, will say. Do you not believe that they have the capacity to fix it? Nobody can fix this system. It's like putting square peg in round hole. It wouldn't work. It's not Buhari's fault or Jonathan or the previous ones. They, uh, they were handed and still being handed instruments, i.e. the Constitution, that cannot work the way it is. If I could pick it up from there, Doctor, so how do we approach this? Because we've seen people come into government, or before they come, either they come into government or when they leave, they talk about restructuring or ensure we have a proper federal system, but when they are in government, the story changes. Yeah, when you are eating, you don't talk. That's what they say. And they are eating now. The executives, the legislators, and the judicial sharing. The masses, they are going to go beyond control. That innocent people will be beaten pop on the street. We're getting error. History is that throughout the world. We are human beings like other societies. When you push somebody to the world, they react. Nigerians are reacting. And we are trying to blame them. We, they, we are all victimized. We've been put in a situation that no decent human being should be in. Nigeria so, never was like this. Ethnicity, religion never played important roles in our life. You were free to believe what you were. You were free to live where you are. But now the scarcity of the necessities of things of life and living have pushed people to compete for smaller and smaller good things. And so the intensity of competition it's now say, okay, I must give to the, somebody who is a member of my church, or I must give it to somebody who is uh, from my ethnic group or my village. This is because of the scarcity of the necessities of, 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 of things of life and living. We are supposed to produce. We are consumers. We, we do not produce anything. All the factories that are in Nigeria have closed down. Unemployment is soaring. Boys and girls are leaving high schools, universities, no work. Speaking about history... And you say, that if I'm, I'm really, sorry, I'm really embarrassed that we are too docile. People should go out and smash all these things. Yeah, they are oppressed. You, you, you're not calling for violence. <laughs> that no, no, way. No, no, they have been violated. But if I'm speaking about... And I my friend. Speaking about history... If your uh, government, masses, your institutions are not serving you, you, you take them and redress and make well, them work. But people shouldn't take blood into their hands.